How you doing, fellas? Hey, Mark. Hello. Been a while. Uh-huh. Some new how's, faces. Uh, how's the ultimate fighter going? I don't know how much I'm allowed to say on that, so I don't really want to get in trouble, that's for sure. Have you enjoyed it, though? Enjoying the time? It's been one of the neatest experiences of my life, other than actually competing. Uh, got the juices flowing again, you know. Uh, I took it as my training camp, my comeback time, because I've been slacking off quite a bit, and I got thrown right to the wolves. I got uh, eight hungry guys coming at me, and I got to defend myself, so... I, I, thrown right back into the pit. I just had a hip replacement surgery, so I, I don't think my surgeon would be too happy with what I'm doing. I didn't let him know, of course, but I probably shouldn't be doing it. I probably shouldn't have did a lot of stuff. Sometimes you got to take a chance, and I'm glad I did because it's an amazing experience so far. I love both teams, the red and blues. I, I've, I, I've made a lot of friends. For forever, and I'll be fans of these guys. I can't wait to see how they evolve and end up in the UFC. How did it come about that uh, BJ Penn got a hold of you to be a part of his team? Um, well, me and BJ been been he's been here forever too. He's a lot younger, but he's still been here since the beginning. We've always been friends, always got along, and uh, I, I wasn't expecting it. Uh, he came out of the blue. That's how BJ works. Uh, flies by the moment sometimes, and and uh, yeah, he called me up, gave me. He said you got to get on a plane Monday. It was Friday. Ah, I got two kids and uh, some other stuff, but I, I couldn't turn it down. It was too big, too tempting, too sounded too beautiful, too grave an offer, and and uh, I'm thankful to BJ for asking me and having confidence in me, and uh, Dana White, the tough, all these people just. Just grateful and thankful to have this opportunity because it has been a truly amazing ride so far. It's coming to an end, and I wish it wasn't because uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of mutual friendship, bonding, whatever you want to call it with these guys. I love them all. Mark, what's uh, your opinion of some of the young guys coming up in the sport? You hear sometimes guys like Don Fry, they you almost never have something nice to say about the uh, the young fighters today. What's kind of your opinion of the guys on the show and just young fighters in general? I don't know why Don says that. He's, he, he's feisty and grouchy. We all get that way when we have to retire. You, nobody wants to retire. Nobody thinks it's going to happen and it's on you. So, pardon me? What? All right, I see you a little bit. Uh, Don Fry, yeah, what is this? I don't know what he's thinking because uh, I know these eight guys that I'm working with and even the whole red team, I know they're respectful and they work as hard as anybody I've ever seen. Um, a lot of them have their own idea of how it should go, but I don't I don't blame them because I was the same way. I liked, I thought I had it all figured out for a long time. And nobody has it all figured out. All his coaches are learning as we go still and trying to work together, feel them out and see what they need. Not overtrain them, not undertrain, of course. But uh, I, I, I used to think it was pretty hard to overtrain, but I found, you know, this thing is, I've learned a lot here, probably more than I learned in, in 10 years, in five weeks with all these BJ, Andre, Marcus Bouchesha. Jason Perillo, these guys are the top of the chamber in those areas, so I've been paying attention. And I, I just really wish I knew some of these things back when uh, I was rolling. It made it a lot easier. But these younger fighters, I love them all, man. They are they are respectful and they will do anything. You gotta you gotta beg them to back off a little bit because they just you know they want to win this so bad. They're training too hard. You gotta know you gotta be smart about your training, and that's been. He, pretty hard to overtrain, like I said, but these guys have found a way to prove me wrong. They, they're, they're training too hard. They got to back off, save the fight for the cage. Don't leave it in the gym. I mean, and they don't want to talk too much about it, but some people have left their fight in the gym. It's, you, you can notice, you can see it. You had a lot of injuries that eventually were the cause of what made you step back and retire. Uh, what would you have done differently seeing the training that you do today on a different kind of a level, different evolution? Uh, what would you do differently, anything, as far as being able to preserve your body longer and stay in the sport? Well, I think I preserved my body 
for a long time. I, you know, I got an ACL, uh, neck surgery, and uh, the hip was the big one. But other than that, uh, for 40 some years, 40, I was 45. That's a, I preserved it pretty good. That's that's relatively, in my opinion, coming out of 20 years of wrestling, 15 more of fighting, coming out of what I got, I, I think I came out of it pretty clean. The hip, the hip was a setback, but once I had the surgery, the, the doctor told me he was going to make me feel like a million bucks, and, and I don't know about a million, but uh, it, it feels good because I didn't have a hip for about five years. I was fighting with one hip my last five years, sucking it up, getting therapy, and, and going out there doing it, but I, my, my knee was throbbing, my groin was throbbing, my back was throbbing. I didn't even know it was my hip, and as soon as, when they finally took a picture, well, there wasn't no hip there. It was gone. But they put a new hip in there. It does feel better. My knee feels great. My everything's back in place, and I feel like, yeah, there's. You can talk to some other guys about their doctor track record, and it's a lot worse than mine. So, I think I got out of it right where I should be. Two or three, four surgeries. That ain't too bad. You speak George, about your. Oh, God. George was telling us a story earlier about the first time he met you at his first UFC fight. Do you remember that? Do you remember that moment meeting George, seeing him for the first time? Yeah, I do because he's. George has brought it up a few times, and uh, uh, well, it was early, so obviously I was learning. I didn't know who George was. I was getting my guy ready, and I guess I kind of wasn't giving him any room to warm up, and uh, he wasn't sure who this guy was. Me and Random and sitting there screaming at our guy. That's the way we did things, I guess. There's no right or wrong. There's probably better, but uh, there's no right or wrong. Probably better, and then. But yeah, I, I get a I get a kick out of George still remembering that day. He was on the card, just getting started, and uh, you know, the Hammer House came in and bullied him off a little bit, I guess. But I guess he gets the mat now, right? <laughs> he don't have no problem getting mad space now. When you see like documentaries and stuff talking about like the dark days, you know they're labeled as the dark days. I mean, with the fighters who are involved in that, what do they remember that as? They, do they remember that as dark days, or do they remember that as fun, good times? Not me. I don't remember those dark days. Those were bright, beautiful, glorious, unbelievable days. You know, just uh, uh, you know, dream come true for me. I always wanted to be a pro athlete, and uh, I felt like uh, when I won the UFC, I felt like I was a pro athlete. Those were great days for me. I don't know who calls them the dark days. Maybe maybe the owners weren't making enough money, but I was happy. I enjoyed it. No rules. I mean, Beautiful. Were, were the fighters having conversations like, you know, what's happening in court, what's happening on the cable televisions? Were they just like, well, we're going to fight and we're going to trust them to, to get it? I left it up to them. That was that was what they do best. And uh, I'm just going to keep training and, and be ready when they call us. You know, call my, uh, the, when I won the heavyweight title, we're sitting in New York and the whole fiasco, we had to head down to Alabama. Just went with the flow. I just I was just hoping they could figure out how to put this show on. I didn't care. If we land in Alabama at 7 o'clock and I'm walking out to the cage 30 minutes later, I just wanted to fight that night. You know, I didn't, you don't have time to let stuff like that bother you. How, how big did you think it could become? This big. I, I always thought the UFC, that was just me. When I first saw it, I, you know, I know there's a lot of people think like I do. It was incredible UFC won when I saw I just hoped it was true. And I, then I had to figure out how to get in this because this is what I want to do immediately and I did feel like I could beat all them guys in UFC 1 including Hoist Crazy. I just felt like I could beat them. If you don't think that way well then you might not want to be in this sport. I believed I was the best and even though I had no experience I thought I had experience and it worked out good. Uh, who knows what would have happened if me and Hoist would have locked them up early on. I think I would have got them but I got respect for the jiu-jitsu game now, and uh, yeah, I might have found myself in the predicament back then, but a couple headbutts would take care of that a little bit. <laughs> Did you like the old rules better? Of course I liked the old rules better. I was at home in that cage with no rules. It's beautiful. They took the headbutt away. I would cry for like a baby for a few days. My first fight, I was lost. I'm staring at this guy's face, and I can't hit it with my head. People. I didn't do so well my first fight. If you look back, it was Pete Williams, and uh, I had other issues going that night. But uh, yes, I struggled, and uh, 
And then looking at a guy's face and not being able to headbutt it, I didn't. Yeah, but there's other ways around. I just I didn't have them in my trick, my bag of tricks at the time. And, uh, and then, they, then they took away my shoes, my other baby. I cried again. And, uh, you know, less rules, the better for me. But I adjusted. I was, I was proud to be able to make it. When I, got, when I left the UFC, they basically they cut me. I went over to Pride out of necessity. But my goal was I got to I gotta get back to okay. the UFC. I get, that was great. Nothing. Pride was awesome. Japan was great. But I still, I'm from America. I wanted back into the UFC. And I held on long enough to get back for three, three final fights. And uh, that meant a lot to me. To me, it kind of secured my spot. Yes, I won in the old school days, but I wanted to prove I could still do it with these highly skilled, freakish athletes now. And jiu-jitsu was a big factor there, so it was great. You, uh, you got to win at UFC 100 over Stefan Bonner. That was obviously a very big card. Do you feel like this card has that same kind of big vibe that that show did too? or do you... yes. well, This is a huge card. you got a 20th anniversary, 20 years UFC getting bigger every day. I imagine the atmosphere is going to be excitement. Everybody everybody can't wait for this weekend. I think it's going to be a big, huge crowd, exciting crowd, and you got two guys that can put on a heck of a fight, St. Pierre and Hendricks, so hopefully they get their money's worth. I'm sure they will. Uh, Hendricks, he loves to entertain. He's going to make it an entertaining fight, I'm sure. So, yeah, it's a big, big card. Uh, UFC 100, that uh, it's hard to separate, but really that was probably my favorite win. Even though I won some belts to do it at 44, that was special to me because I had to find a way to suck it up. That was me. Did you have to break it to Johnny about the real OSU? He's from Oklahoma State, but did you tell him what the real OSU is? Well, I just uh, cornered... Uh, they did a uh, pro amateur wrestling show out here, and I cornered uh, the the Ohio State Lance Palmer versus Oliver Jordan from Oklahoma State. I think that's how you say. But uh, had to eat some crow that night. They, they, they whooped us. It's a nice little matchup. Ohio State and Oklahoma State. Certainly, they both both schools are at the elite of college wrestling for sure. But we know the real OSU, right? Like, no, real OSU is the Ohio State University. Right. Nobody agrees? <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure. Whatever you say, man. Good. All right, buddy. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Thank